Hi there. I am Kathy Pashanko, and I want to talk to you a little bit about human design. So human design is this amazing tool that I have found has really transformed my life. And I wanted to tell a little bit of my story to see if it might help those of you who are either just starting on your human design journey, or maybe you don't even know what it is. So first of all, if you don't know what human design is, you can run your chart at my website, and that is kathybashonko.com, K-A-T-H-Y-B-O-C-H-O-N-K-O.com. And there's a free chart generator, and there's also a free report that will just explain some of the basics to you of your design. So I definitely encourage you, if you have not done your chart already, pause the video and get your chart first. So you'll know what I'm talking about. And then if you are somebody who already knows about human design, maybe you've been in your design for a while, but maybe you're just feeling like you don't really know if it's going where you thought it was going to go, or, you know, you just are kind of feeling like you might need a little redirect. And that's not uncommon. A lot of us, when we first find human design, um, wind up kind of getting in our head about it, right? So there's a lot to human design. And I'm not going to get into all the components of what human design is in this video. I want to talk more about what it can do. There's lots of stuff out there and on how it came about. So I'm going to assume that you either have found it or don't need to know that in this video. So when I first found human design and it was introduced to me, I was told that I am a projector. Okay. So a projector means that we have this penetrating aura where we can really connect with the identity center of another person in a way that's penetrating, very focused. And that's a really special thing, but it's very intimate. So because this energy is so intimate, it needs to be recognized by the other and invited because, you know, intimacy without invitation is not okay, right? So I, I understood this very, it made a lot of sense when I first heard that this was something that was part of who I am, who I came here to be. And I realized that I kept being misunderstood by people or people would, um, you know, I'd say something with the best of intentions and people would push back big time, right? And I, then I'd be like, no, 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 that's not what I meant, right? And I'd be over explaining more. But what human design taught me was that I'm not supposed to initiate. I might have all the insights and all the um, all the awareness that a person needs, but if they don't ask for it, it is not my place to share those insights. So um, that was really, really a profound thing for me to understand about myself. And so I just started getting deeper and deeper into, oh, so this makes sense. I'm going to try to learn more about what this says about me. And another thing I learned is that I'm emotional authority. And um, I always knew I was emotional, but I didn't know what this emotional authority was. Emotional authority means that I am meant to wait for clarity over time. And so that's not how the world teaches us to be, right? You're supposed to go out there, make things happen, be decisive, be, um, you know, just in the moment, right? And so learning these things just was like mind blowing to me that I was not broken because it took me a long time to, you know, I couldn't decide simple things like, you know, what did I want to wear that day? Or what did, um, what did I want to eat? Took me a lot of time sometimes to make up my mind. And when I really started to get into human design and I resisted a little bit because it felt a little woo woo, 
And I wasn't sure if it was something I could be certain enough about to be sure that it was, um, you know, we're taught to, to think and be very logical and human design is very much about feeling and sensing and it, our intuition and trusting ourself. And that was hard for me. So there's a lot of looping that happened in the beginning with me where I kept learning and learning and learning and things would make so much sense in the mind. But living them in the body and embracing them in the body was a whole different thing, right? So there's this um, idea, traditional human design calls it passenger consciousness. I know Robin Wynn calls it the witnessing observer. And it's really this idea that we're meant to observe our thoughts and not, um, not become our thoughts. And um, so that's really been the key for me is and it's taken years of trying to learn my way through human design and then all of a sudden realizing, no, this is just me feeding my mind more stuff to torture me with. And so this thing happened over time where I was able to then say, Oh, isn't that interesting? Look at what I'm doing. Or I have this question that keeps coming up. Hmm. Perhaps an perhaps an answer will appear. Instead of trying to think my way through every decision, right? I learned to wait and become comfortable with the ambiguity of uncertainty which ironically is my cross. I'm left ankle cross of uncertainty. Human design teaches us that we all have an incarnation cross that comes from the, the energy of four gates. Now, this is not meant to be your introductory, like here's how you do human design video. And I might do that really soon. Um, but what I wanted to do in this video was to really talk about that transition from me learning human design and me living human design and how I went from this frustration. And yeah, it was frustration even because I was really very much still trying to be a generator. So I was feeling some frustration, I think. Um, although the signature emotion for a projector is bitterness. And I definitely felt that as well. Um, because I kept thinking, well, when's the invitation going to come? And if any of you know any projectors out there who are still in that phase, they're, it's not so fun to be around us when we're like that. Um, and add an emotional wave to that, and it's even worse. So um, this loop was going on and on of me just trying to learn my way out of things. And it really didn't click for me until I started doing a lot of other work to decondition myself um, because my mind was not allowing me to follow my strategy and authority. My mind kept saying, but you know this and you need to do this and you you know there was just all this chatter i had a bunch of monkey monkey mind i think we've heard the expression so i really made it all so complicated and i and i'm saying this because i see a lot of people doing that and um people who reach out to me and want a reading and they want to know all the things. And when we start to talk about strategy and authority, they're like, yeah, 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 I know that. But it's very clear that they don't know how to live that. So there's nothing wrong with learning about your gates and your channels. 
but it cannot replace the being able to be present and know that waiting is not a punishment. We're all here to wait, right? I'm a projector, so I'm waiting for the recognition and invitation. Now, that does not mean that I am passively waiting, right? There's this actively waiting where you're still active in your own life and pleasure and enjoyment, but the um, the waiting for the recognition before you expend your energy with other people. So it's kind of like, don't throw your pearls be before swine. You've heard the expression. Um, and that doesn't mean that somebody is a bad person. I'm not saying that some, you know, you're choosing based on somebody's a pig. I'm saying you don't waste your energy. We have a beautiful undefined sacral that can take in the energy of others and amplify it. But if that energy that you're taking in does not recognize you, you're taking in this like host hostile energy that does not see who you are. And you're penetrating your energy into a person who is not welcoming of that. And that's just a really uncomfortable way to do things. So that bitterness that you start to feel is a gift. And it tells you that you're operating incorrectly. And so then you can stop and pull back and say, okay, where am I meant to be using my energy that lights me up, that makes me happy, that is about what I want, that is not imposing any of that on someone else. So the invitation is needed for things that affect other people, but you don't need an invitation to create art, to redecorate your house, to plant a garden, to read a book, to take a class, to do anything that is strictly for you, okay? But when you're doing something that is about relationship, so you might even say in-person classes, you know, or or one-on-one -on -one type of classes, you might need a bit of an invitation for that, for it to really go well. But the thing that I realized was knowing that I recognized myself and did not was not doing something for recognition from another person. So for example, if I'm taking a class and even if it is something with the teacher, if I need that teacher to believe that I am smart and capable and have an opinion of me, and I have not been invited into that relationship with that instructor, that's not going to go well. That's not correct for me. But if I am taking the class because I want to learn this and I'm doing it for myself and it does not matter to me what the per teacher's personal opinion of me is, as long as I know I'm doing my best and I'm not, um, I'm not looking for that, then that makes a difference. And I hope that makes some sense because that was huge for me because there are people out there who think waiting means you don't do anything unless someone asks you to. And that's just crazy. I've got a lot of energy when I'm excited about something and, um, most projectors can outwork the best of you of people because they have all this openness that can amplify things. So active waiting means you're doing what you love for yourself and recognizing your own worth and your own value. And passive waiting is when you're like waiting for someone to tell you that you deserve to be here. And that's a huge difference. And that passive waiting is where most people wind up becoming bitter and not getting the invitations. So um, the other thing is the idea of trusting that we're supported, right? So if you're waiting and you're just like, I don't know, is it going to happen? I know that everything in this universe is happening for me. Even if it doesn't feel like what I wanted, it's because I have yet to imagine what there is 
out there for me, right? So I might have this idea that I want to have a certain kind of home. And I might see a home that I think is a wonderful home, but I was not invited to, to move. Um, or it just, the, the situation does not feel correct in that way. Or something doesn't even happen, right? I, I apply for a job and I don't get it. And that might feel really discouraging. But what I might really be meant to do is so much bigger than that. And I just really have learned to trust that there's a reason when things don't line up the way we wanted them to. And some of the reasons feel pretty crappy in the moment, but they're all meant to teach us something. And um, just trusting that the more we follow our strategy and authority, the more we draw the correct experiences to us. And human design teaches us that we have this magnetic monopole. It's a like a one-sided magnet. It only attracts. And that sits in the identity center. And the identity center is also where we as projectors have this ability to really probe and see and connect with others, right? So we have this ability to really help others see what they need to do to attract the right things to them. And sometimes the questions that we ask them can help them really align in a way that draws the right things to them. And often through those that guidance with other people, we also align ourselves. You know, projectors are really here for the other. We're here to guide but that doesn't mean that we don't benefit from it. And in that, through that guiding of others, we wind up um, drawing things to us when we are truly guiding others in a way that is what they need, what's right for them, what they have asked for and not guiding others so that we feel recognized. And that's been a big thing my whole life is you know, when I was younger, it's like, oh, well, if I tell them all the answers, if I help them to reach their goals, then they're going to think I'm really awesome. Right. And that's coming from a place of, of insecurity that, you know, is very commonly referred to as the projector wound. We need that recognition. We don't have a motorized throat, which is energy to make things happen in the moment, this initiating energy, that's a manifester and uh, manifesting generators also have a motorized throat, but it's a little bit different in that aspect. Um, but we're not here to initiate things. We're here to guide others, mostly generators. Um, generators are the workforce of the, of the planet. And we're here to guide their energy. That doesn't mean we're here to tell them what to do. We're here to help them know what to respond to, but they are completely autonomous in that response. So the biggest thing that has shifted for me in the last, you know, probably really in the last year, but it started a couple, couple years ago, um, is this idea of being responsible for anybody else's journey or expectations or emotions. So um, when you start shifting what you're doing because you don't want someone to be upset or you're you know, projecting something on another person that you, um, you know, it's easy to like, for example, it was easy to blame my husband for why I, wasn't doing things that I wanted to do. But really, you know, just because he doesn't say he wants to do it doesn't mean that that's his fault that I don't do it. So I want, I, I might be a little bit rambling here, but I'm just trying to share the idea of 
The human design journey is about understanding what you're here to do, right? And what you're here to do is different based on your energy type. So much of what I'm talking about is what a projector is here to do. But if you're a generator type, you're here to respond. And if you can have the same kind of frustrations where either, oh, there's nothing to respond to, I'm just waiting for something to respond to. And then you go out and try to make things happen. You start responding to your mind, right? And that's kind of the same thing where you've got to escape that loop of letting the mind run the life. The mind is amazing and it's here to inspire, you know, we can be inspired and have all this wisdom that's in our mind, but it's not the authority. It doesn't get to decide what, what we do and when we do it. That's what our authority is about. So I hope that's helpful. Um, and I'd be happy to elaborate on anything that um, anybody might be unclear about. And remember, I am always available for a free discovery call if you're interested in learning more about how to get out of your head and into your experiment in the body. So you can set up a discovery call at kathybashanko.com and I'll put a link to my website in the comments or I'm not, if you're watching this in YouTube, it'll be in the description. And I hope everybody has a great day and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're on there and I will catch you next time. Peace out.